My friend Eric earlier sent me a DM asking me some questions about his lease buyout. He was asking me some questions regarding tax and interest rate and whatnot, and he was the inspiration behind this video. I wanted to make this video to give you some tips, some pointers, and some facts about how the lease buyout process is probably going to treat you. Over this last year, my father bought out two of his leased vehicles. We have a couple business vehicles, one of them a Toyota and another one a Kia. The Toyota was a breeze. The Kia, it actually was a little bit of a nightmare. However, it ended with a very, very interesting story with the value of the Kia skyrocketing in the time that it took for them to issue the title to us. Very, very weird scenario. Usually cars depreciate, but given the current circumstance, it appreciated heavily. In this video, what I wanna do for you is, is break down the lease buyout process so that you're well equipped. And if you don't know me, my name is Ari Janessian. Please consider subscribing because this whole channel is gonna teach you everything you're gonna need to know so that you can negotiate your best possible deal. You guys, let's get down to business. Now, if you're buying out the lease and hoping to do it without the help of a dealer, it will be a little bit of a pain in the butt, so be ready for it. The idea behind buying it on your own is to save on a ton of the dealer costs, such as you know the documentation fee. In Massachusetts, we actually pay a safety inspection fee, which they do. They basically look at the car and make sure that the car is safe enough to sell to you. They, they check a few different things, but really, the safety inspection is just another way for the dealership to make some money. Now, depending on how much your time is actually worth to you it may make a little bit more sense to buy from the dealer because this could significantly cut down the amount of time that you're personally spending as well as the frustration if you're in a hurry and you can't have any lapses in registration between the time it takes to get the title and register it yourself you may want to consider buying it from the dealer if it's going to cost you a ton of money such as you know paying a high documentation fee and whatnot then consider buying it on your own if you're forced to buy it from the dealer, that sucks, and there's really no way around it. A lot of companies are forcing customers to have to buy the car from the dealership. However, there are companies that are still allowing you to buy the car on your own using your own financing, etc. Now, the price of the car will not change if you're buying it on your own or buying it through the dealer directly. Basically, if you look at your lease contract, you'll see that there's a residual value. Basically, take that residual value, add the tax to it, as well as usually they charge a purchase option fee. If you want the whole total price as of right now, or maybe you're buying out the lease before the lease is up, you can always call them or sign into your account online to find out what the current buyout price is or the current payoff is. Usually they'll give you a value that's good for 10 days, and this will include all the fees and all taxes and whatnot. Now, if you're wondering to yourself if you have to pay tax if you're planning to buy the car, get the title, and sell it to CarMax. You still have to pay tax in most situations unless you are a dealer yourself. Now, when talking about is it worth buying out your leased car, typically it has never been the case so strongly to buy out your leased car to save a ton of money as opposed to buying that same car on the market. Right now, used car prices are through the roof, and if you got lucky enough to have signed a lease deal three years ago or two and a half years ago or whatever, and you agree to a residual value that's far less than what the car is actually worth on the market right now, it's probably worth it to buy out the car. However, that may not be the case 100%. What you wanna do is compare what your buyout price is right now, not including tax, and compare that against what that same car is going for on the market. And you gotta be super, super specific. If the two values are very, very different in the sense that what you're getting it for is far less than what it is on the market, then definitely buy out the lease. However, if the values are close and you've got an accident report or the car sustains some damage, it may not be truly worth it. You wanna take a look into maybe is this car the right car for me for the long term or maybe i want to just go out and get the same car but just in a lot cleaner condition 
Now you may be wondering to yourself, okay, I definitely want to buy out the car, but I'm not so certain that I want to take care of this whole thing on my own. Let me just explain to you how simple it is to take care of it on your own. In essence, what you're going to be doing is, is writing a check to the financial services arm of whoever you're leasing out the car to, but you're also responsible for registering the car as well. There may actually be a lapse in time where the car can't move because there is a lapse in registration. Keep that in mind. This could hold you up for a little bit of time. Now, if you're wondering to yourself how easy or how hard it is, think to yourself, if you ever bought a car from, say, Craigslist, it's basically just paying the lender, getting the title, and being able to just be the middleman between you, the new lender, whoever you're financing the car through, or if you bought it in cash, you are the lender, so you keep the title, go into the RMV and just registering the car. Simple as that. It doesn't really require much except for a new registration taking place. There is no transferring of registration in this case. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, I don't want to have to go through all that. How much more is it going to cost me to purchase it from the dealer? Or is it a good idea to just purchase it from the dealer? Again, if you're short on time, it's definitely a good idea to go through the dealer, depending on how much your time is actually worth. Now, if you want to go through the dealer, there are some benefits in going through the dealer. Number one, they'll actually look at the car and make sure it's safe enough to sell you or if there's anything actually wrong with it that needs to be fixed before you buy it or you can request for them to do this for you. The service department of most every dealership will be able to offer this service to you at somewhat of a reasonable cost, say like $150, $250 to just go through the car and see what sort of work it may need. Now, the other benefit to this is that if you're considering getting a warranty, now would be a good time to negotiate the hell out of something. Say, if you were looking at a warranty through a third party, there's a lot of companies online, AAA, et cetera, you can ask them to beat that offer and include it in your financing if financing was something you were looking for. In a lot of circumstances, financing through the dealer is usually not too, too different than just financing through a credit union. However, it is a major opportunity for them to try and mark up whatever financing you may qualify for and adding a couple points to that interest rate. You want to make sure that you're shopping around for a better interest rate before you actually go to the dealership. Now, lease buyout rates are a little bit different than used cars before lease buyout out rates were actually lower than used cars, but because so many people are doing it, it could make a little bit of a difference depending on where you go. Some places are just charging it just as a regular used car, and some places have a special rate for lease buyout. Specifically, Bank of America has a lease buyout rate that's actually higher than a used car from a dealer rate. Now, everybody is going to want to run your credit. Everywhere you go, it seems like any bank is asking for your credit information up front before they even tell you what's the best rate that they can offer. They might guesstimate what they can offer you. However, they're going to want to run your credit to get super, super specific on it. I don't think that it's a bad idea to run your credit at a few different places because what FICO is going to do is, is lump these inquiries if they're made you know, through a two-week process window, they'll usually lump all these inquiries into one. Don't start shopping around now and keep running your credit for the next few months because that will bury your credit. And shop around, but shop around within this roughly two-week window and try to get a few rates from all these banks. The reason why you're going to be doing this is obviously to know what the lowest that's available to you publicly or say it privately through a credit union, but you're going to take these to the dealership that you're trying to buy from and telling them, hey, I got this offer. If you can beat it, I'll definitely finance through you. That would be my suggestion in terms of financing. However, keep in mind, dealerships have access to very, very good interest rates through credit unions that you can take advantage of. So don't just rule out dealer financing altogether. Now, the best credit is seeing interest rates in the low twos for used and leased buyouts. And I'm seeing it go all the way up to 5%, 6%, again, on the best credit for used cars. Definitely don't take 5 or 6% if you've got an 800 FICO, but keep in mind that there is a wild fluctuation depending on which bank you go to. So don't just go to any bank that you think is a trustworthy bank. They could be trustworthy, but they're trying to charge you a ton of money on the loan. 
The average bank rate that I'm seeing is about three and a half percent. The average credit union rate I'm seeing is about two and a half to three percent. Shop it around. You're going to find that some of these banks are offering 3.5 percent or maybe a little bit lower to their members, such as Bank of America again. And a couple of the other resources, AAA in my region is offering pretty low rates as well. Check with your AAA. It may be worth getting a AAA membership if it means getting a lower interest rate. Another resource that I've been working with for the last couple of years, supermoney.com. They're in the description below. In essence, you would also be able to shop around for an auto loan through them. They're not just one rate you'll be able to shop around different lenders definitely check it out if you think that you want to run your credit everywhere else and are in the market for a car but don't run it just to run it now some of you guys are wondering if you're still liable for any damages or any sort of excess wear and tear on the car if the excess wear and tear on the car is going to stop you from passing a safety inspection Typically, the dealership will ask that you fix these issues before you try and buy the car and before they actually register the car for you. If you're buying out the car on your own and you're doing this whole process on your own where the dealership is never actually touching the car, as long as you're paying the lender what they're asking for to release the title, then you don't have to really fix anything. That damage now belongs to you. That excess wear and tear, that belongs to you because you now own the car. So definitely don't do any major work if you're planning to buy out the car. However, if it's required that you fix all the damage to pass a safety inspection, you may want to look into that a little bit further. I really, really hope this information helped you guys. Definitely check out supermoney.com in the description below if you're looking to start the process of buying out your auto lease. If you found this information useful, please consider subscribing. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.